back to the daily grind. Thanks for checking out the channel. Make sure to hit subscribe if you're new and hit thumbs up if you're not a baby back bagel biting bitch boy because you know what time it is. It's full time. MMA. Yo, RDA is a marked man. Holy smokes, I haven't seen anybody called out this much since Michael Bisping knocked out Luke Rockhold and became the middleweight champion, and everyone saw the opportunity to pounce for the gold. But holy smokes, it's happening with RDA now. That's not a good look. I don't know what people are seeing. RDA's coming out doing his thug thizzle, running through the welterweight division on his way to a title shot. He wants to claim another UFC title, as we know. Know Rafael Dos Anjos was the former lightweight champion who's now moved up to welterweight undefeated at welterweight and just beat Robbie Lawler via unanimous decision or brutality that 23 second combo in the second round was something to marvel at but you know Robbie Lawler's uh, he's ruthless he's ruthless Robbie Lawler of course he survived it it almost looked like an old school boxing rope-a-dope like yo how is RDA gonna finish the fight throwing all these damn punches but it is what it is. He, he pulled it out. Next three rounds, RDA still won. But now that he won this fight, people are targeting RDA. I mean, we saw Santiago Ponzinibbio after he beat Mike Perry on the same card. He was like, hey, I want the winner of Lawler vs. RDA for an interim title shot. He was ready for either one of them. But now that RDA is the that guy, the guy that won the fight, everybody wants a piece of Rafael Dos Anjos. I mean, every, every single ranked opponent, it seems, and I'm sure there's some unranked guys, but holy smokes. First, we had, as I said, Santiago Ponzinibbio. Then we had Kobe Covington coming out and saying hey come defend that place that dump you call home filthy animal rda for an interim title shot rda was like get the who the fuck is that guy you know a lot of people ain't giving kobe covington that play i'm not about to give you this opportunity off of disrespecting me and that's how tyron woodley the current champions felt and that's how rda said he's like get you know you only got 18,000 twitter followers yeah i'm not even entertaining that guy but Kobe Covenant is a he's is number three ranked in the welterweight division. Now we've had Kamaru Usman on Twitter say, RDA, you can keep running for me, but I will find you and I will lay your ass down. Ooh, I would love that fight. Kamaru Usman is somebody I've actually got to take a second to talk about because his fight with Emil Mech was just rescheduled for UFC 220, which isn't too bad. I mean, it was looking like Emil Mech might have had visa issues for UFC 219. Now their fight... Um, it looks like even if it, the visa issues are cleared up, because I thought I saw that on Emil Mech's Twitter, like he was going to be able to make the fight. But the UFC has rescheduled that bout for UFC 220. Kamaru Usman is a force to be reckoned with. This dude won the Ultimate Fighter and is now undefeated on a six-fight winning streak in the UFC. And zero contenders won't smoke with Kamaru Usman. Nobody's wanting that fight right now. Everybody's looking at it as too high of a risk, too low of a reward. And people are saying, yeah, no one's scared of Kamaru Usman. And I, I believe any of these fighters are like going to sleep having nightmares about other fighters. But if you're talking about when looking at another welterweight contender, and you know compared to another one like who do I have a better chance of beating I think a lot of people aren't picking Kamaru Usman for the fight if you had an opportunity between Kamaru Usman and another top 10 guy I'm just saying a lot of people are taking that other pick and you can and it, and it could be because people say maybe Kamaru Usman just like RDA said about Kobe Covington because he doesn't have a hundred thousand Twitter followers and that's the game is and that is kind of bullshit because I mean especially in cases like this this is what Kamaru Usman is literally gonna have to do he's going to have to take the the Max Holloway the Tony Ferguson the Robert Whitaker route. He's going to have to just keep beating guys and beating guys until he's on a nine fight, 10 fight winning streak. And he's undeniable because he's not going to get the opportunities that, you know, like a Darren Till was given. Darren Till was very fortunate that Cowboy Cerrone accepted that fight with him or a lot of people would still not know much about Darren Till. Darren Till was put on everybody's radar. That's another guy that wants to fight RDA, I'm sure. But Darren Till is a is a welterweight that everyone's talking about, an up-and-comer, and everyone is big on this guy and he's got a lot of hype now because he actually fought Donald Cerrone. Now, everybody's not aboard the Darren Till hype train. Everybody doesn't see what his, his fans see yet. Some people say he's still got more to prove. A win 
argument over Donald Cerrone is not enough, but the fact that he got to fight Donald Cerrone put him on everybody's radar. Kamaru Usman is still not on a lot of people's radars as he is literally tearing through everybody he's fought in the UFC. If you go through Kamaru, UFC.com on Kamaru Usman and you go through his like fight metrics, his stats on his fights, he outstrikes his opponents, he scores more takedowns than his opponents, and no one can beat the guy. And when it comes to all of these guys, he's been calling them out, Cole, whether it's Kobe Covington, whether it's RDA, whether it's Darren Till, whether it's anybody in the welterweight division that Kamaru Usman has called out usually like no nah, that fight doesn't make much sense for us right now you know that's when politics come into play like yeah we you know we we don't want to fight down in the rankings as we've seen that's why Wonder Boy's team didn't want to fight with Darren Till it's like sorry we don't want to fight down in the rankings and that argument is so weak to me because somebody's always fighting down if Wonder Boy's ranked three and he doesn't want to fight down so he's fighting the ranked two guy what if the ranked two guy says sorry I don't want to fight down He's got to fight down to fight Wonder Boy. So for Wonder Boy to get a fight, somebody's got to fight down to him. So for he just doesn't want to be the guy to fight down. Well, you're coming off of two not very inner, not great performances. Off, you know, with Tyron Woodley. Yes, he did come back and beat Jorge Masvidal. A good win for Wonder Boy. But if you're going for the gold, you might need to wait until Tyron Woodley's not the champion anymore. Because let's say Stephen Wonder Boy Thompson fights RDA and wins. Who the hell wants to see Wonder Boy Woodley 3? So, like, I don't even understand why that makes sense for Wonder Boy to be gunning for a title shot that he's already got two, uh, two cracks at. But that's why he's not fighting the Darren Tills of the world, the Kamar Usmans of the world, because he wants to fight up. But that just doesn't make much sense to me. But Stephen Wonder Boy Thompson is another guy that did call out Rafael Dos Anjos. And you see the tweet at the bottom, Kamar Usman's tweet, as well as, um, as well as, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson's tweet, and Stephen Wonderboy Thompson had to say about Rafael Dos Anjos versus Robbie Lawler, that was a war. Hats off to both RDA and Robbie for that effort. I can be back in the octagon in March. At Rafael Dos Anjos, let's give the, the fans another treat. We both want gold. It's only fitting we battle for it. Yeah, see, it's interesting. I, I, I And see, I'm a really big Wonderboy fan, but it's just as long as Tyron Woodley is the champion... He's kind of in a predicament. I think Wonder Boy might be the next best welterweight on the planet. There's not many people that can beat Wonder Boy as far as his style is so unique. You saw Tyron Woodley had to spend, what, uh, he said uh, over $100,000 on his camp, flying in other karate experts like Raymond Daniels. Uh, and you just hear it in Tyron Woodley's commentating. He was like, like, that's a fucking inside something blitz. And he's like, see, I was training with them karate guys for Wonder Boy. And you can see he picked up a lot. But guys that aren't if you're a striker you've already got your hands full dealing with wonder boy and if you can't fly in those other karate experts like wonder boy you're gonna have a hard time putting figuring out that fucking puzzle there's not a lot of people you're gonna have to be a grappler that really gets a hold of a wonder boy and try and put him down but that's gonna be fucking really hard i really don't see i mean a darren till he's a guy i fucking love i'm really high on darren till but I think Wonder Boy might be able to beat Darren Till just for the because of the style. I fucking love Darren Till. I would love to see that fight. And yes, whenever Wonder Boy turns down the fight, it made me cast a side eye. Like, yo, does he, you know, what's going on? Maybe Darren Till's got more of a chance than some people would expect. It does make sense for Wonder Boy, who is one of the biggest stars, to not he I don't think he's at the point in his career where he needs to fucking like pass the torch. Or he's not at the end of his career. He could derail Darren Till, but it if he's you know, playing the political MMA game, as RDA said, you know, get your Twitter followers up to um, Kobe Covington. He's only got 18,000 Twitter followers. I'd be surprised if Darren Till was there. When you look at the RDAs and the Wonder Boys, they're past 100,000 Twitter followers. And I know it sounds so stupid to some of you. We have to fucking talk about what he's not getting a fight because of Twitter followers. But yes, in the UFC, the Ultimate Fighting Circus, Twitter followers, Instagram followers, social media following actually means a lot. If you can be a guy that comes into the UFC with that somehow has has 20,000 fucking followers off from the jump, the UFC might try and help push that. You came in with 20. Not these guys that literally come in with fucking 20 followers nobody's ever heard of, and they expect to be a star. Those are the guys that usually have to fucking win 8, 9, 10 fights in a win in a row. But like my boy Sean O'Malley, he came off that Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series, and the story is, after he the post with Snoop Dogg after the fight, you know, he shocked all of us, but still, there was a lot of great performances on Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Contender series and 
they didn't get the same pushes as Sean O'Malley because Sean O'Malley just so happened to impress Snoop Dogg enough, went backstage with Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg invited him to like his trailer, they smoked on Instagram, Sean O'Malley got like 20,000 followers, I mean that's the what I read I believe on UFC.com, one of their articles on Sean O'Malley, he got that 20,000 followers and that really helped his push because now he's coming into his UFC debut with more fucking followers than like a Usman or maybe a Kobe Covington, so the UFC can use that and mold that and, and help push that same with maybe a page van zant who went to dancing with the stars now that there's a brand new 125 pound division that's why you see some of these more popular people get the push that's why kobe covington's doing what he's doing because yeah he might only be at 18 twitter followers now 18,000 followers now but now yahoo espn all of these people are picking up these kobe covington articles oh he called out filthy animal rda then they're gonna bring up the past and then you're gonna get some people that are enjoy it or some people that don't like it but it's exposure so kobe covington's gonna be climbing that following and eventually get these fights with the rdas and the woodleys but right now he's still working his way up there he might have to go on the ultimate fighter or you do some other outlandish shit because it seems like that's the route he's taking but with that being said man out of all of these people calling out rafael dos Anjos, i've got to admit the biggest fight would probably be wonder boy right i mean we've had santiago Ponzinibbio calling him out kamaru usman and wonder boy one other person what kobe covington so yeah wonder boy versus rda would be a great fight i actually man I think it would favor Wonder Boy. He's just got to be seen it in the Jorge Masvidal fight, man. You're not just going to be able to. It, it's real fucking hard to deal with Wonder Boy, his, his style. A striker might not be able to get the job done, and that's easy. I'm not going to say RDA is just a striker. Of course, his jujitsu is amazing, but you got to be able to get Wonder Boy to the ground, keep him there, and, and, and you know what I'm saying, be able to work your jujitsu. And a lot of people just aren't able to break through Stephen Wonderboy Thompson's defense. He's literally like an Anderson Silva that's more disciplined. That's why his fights can be boring sometimes, because he's kind of like an Anderson Silva without the dancing and the taunting. And that's why you get so much slack for the performances versus Tyron Woodley and such. You know what I'm saying? Holly Holm, same thing. Like, and, and these are counter strikers. So when they're not doing the Anderson Silva dancing and shit, it's not going to be as entertaining. But it's still fun to watch as far as if if the if they succeed if they succeed if the their opponent tries to break it you know their opponent's going to get frustrated then they're going to be able to pick them apart. I mean, it can be fun, but at the same time, if the their opponent fights like Tyron Woodley. You can be in for a snooze fest. With that being said, Rafael Dos Anjos got a lot of people coming for his fucking neck. He better be. I don't know who he's going to fight, man. It's looking like RDA. A lot of people are calling for an interim title fight with RDA. But to be fair, man, Tyron Woodley is literally. He's fought. He fought four championship fights in 12 months. He defended his belt three times in 12 months. So with that being said, I don't know if there's going to, I don't even want to really, I, I, yeah, I'm not down with an interim belt in that division. Like, I defended my belt three times this calendar year, and now my shoulder got hurt in the third fight of the year defending my belt, and you guys are going to give me an interim title belt? I mean, I just don't think that's necessary, and honestly... All of these belts, I think, are, are a little ridiculous. If the champion is not either injured for a long time right after they win the belt or something, or if they've owned, if they're essentially, if the champion is not active, if it's not an active champion, if they're all fighting Floyd Mayweather or they haven't defended their belt in, in 12 months, that's easy. That's really what needs to happen. A fucking clause that says if a champion doesn't defend his belt in either 12 months 12 months is is really being generous if you think about tyron woodley essentially defending his belt three times in 12 months i mean one time's not too much to ask for so when you've got a champion who's not defending his belt in 12 months maybe their ufc needs a clause but tyron woodley it probably hasn't been i don't know four or five it probably hasn't even been six months since time Woodley defended his belt so no matter what the UFC clause was I don't think it's going to be six months I don't think we're going to be seeing an interim welterweight title fight um but I do want to see RDA versus Wonder Boy or I, I mean I, I don't think everybody else has been calling for an interim title fight with RDA I don't think his own his next fight is only going to be for an interim title he might play that game because he was promised kind of promised a title fight they said this is kind of like a title eliminator winner of robbie lawler and rda fights tyron woodley but that might not be the case 
do you think RDA, that's my question to you guys, I'm about to get out of here, I've said enough on this video, do you think RDA is going to hold out for a title fight, he might do that, he might just sit out now and wait for a title fight, but he could get passed up, and what about these ultimate fighter Kobe Covington Tyron Woodley rumors, if that's going to happen, there can't be an interim title fight, because Tyron Woodley would have an opponent, it would be Kobe Covington, not, you know, RDA or the winner of who he fights but with that being said i've definitely said enough on this fucking video 15 minutes running holy smokes but everybody's fucking targeting rda man now that he's the number one contender former lightweight the number one contender at welterweight people are gunning for him that's kind of like when gsp was about to be the champion former welterweight middleweight champion you know every single fucking middleweight was salivating like mm, i cannot fuck. i'll take that fight it's not like a kamar usman you know a low risk or a high risk low reward it's kind of the opposite when you're talking about the killers of the welterweight division the fucking big dudes in the welterweight division rda he even though he put a beating on robbie lawler he, he you can't tell me he didn't just look a little small for the division of course his skills pushed him past you know did what he needed to do they got him through robbie lawler but i mean you have to think that 23 second combo in the second round could a lightweight have survived that somebody literally might have blew up like brutality style mortal Kombat. if he did that 23 second combo i want a, a combo count i want to know how many fucking somebody needs to make a youtube like video or like a meme and just count the punches like do 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 and then in the end have like 37 hit combo at the top like literally that was insane i could when i was watching that i just giggled like 20 seconds in like how long is he gonna do this is. like i expected robbie lawler's body to just you know bones and shit like mortal Kombat, and then brutality out of fucking nowhere so that just me to the point do you think a lightweight could have survived that or does that just have to do with how durable robbie lawler is and how the fuck is this dude so durable through all of these wars robbie lawler has probably been through more wars than anybody i can think of in mma history as far as wars unit decisions fucking back and forth wars you take the you take shots i take shots fucking just brawls robbie lawler's up there how is he still so fucking durable i mean it is what it is rafael dos Anjos is a marked man people are a little it, it's seeming like people are salivating at this dude for some reason he's got the skills but does he have the size 15 pounds is a pretty big jump it's not just going up 10 pounds i mean yes the weight cut was killing him but some of these guys probably haven't even thought about making 155 pounds. If there was a... I don't know, man. It is what it is. You get the point, man. Let the full-time family know what the fuck you tell me in the comments. I'm out. It's the motherfucking D-O-Double-G.